They were brilliant minds who specialized in their field with the sole purpose of making this world a better place. Hours and hours of time and effort invested to finally publish advances that in some cases could change our history. However, that noble cause was apparently not viewed favorably by powerful personalities and entities who saw in them a real threat that undermined their interests. People discovered incredible things, but unfortunately ended up being victims of extremely mysterious situations, some disappearing, others being found dead in strange circumstances, among others. What did they discover? Why are they no longer with us? Stay and find out. My name is Leonor Clay, and this is The Darkest Secret. Today we present People Who Disappeared Because They Knew Too Much. Number 7 Barnaby Jack was a white head hacker who rose to fame when in August 2010 he gave a live public demonstration of how to use a simple laptop computer to make an ATM dispense fresh money. According to his definition, a white head hacker is one who recognizes himself as an ethical hacker or an information security expert who specializes in penetration testing and other methodologies to detect vulnerabilities and improve the security of computer systems, communication, and information of an organization. At a conference, Barnaby presented an ATM exploit. He demonstrated that he could completely bust an ATM in a matter of minutes without anyone noticing. However, the objective of this professional hacker was not to go from ATM to ATM withdrawing money. He only wanted to demonstrate how vulnerable the security systems that this type of device were, thus giving an alert to the banks to improve their systems. This positioned him as one of the best hackers in the world. However, for Barnaby Jack, this was not enough. Jack thought that his years of analysis sitting in front of the screen should bear much more substantial results for people. Investigating and hacking, he managed to find very sensitive information regarding the medical technology industry. That's how he decided to reveal this information at a news conference. It was in the year 2013 that the conference was set to take place in Las Vegas, Nevada a world convention of hackers where Barnaby Jack was going to be one of its main stars to reveal his most recent cybernetic discovery. However, this hacker never made it to the conference, as just a week earlier, at just 36 years of age, he was pronounced dead. He died suddenly in a San Francisco hospital. Mysteriously, the cause of his death was never revealed so speculation was immediate. From his close circle, they confirmed that the topic that Jack was going to speak of at the convention was highly controversial. Well, he was openly going to talk in depth about the hacking of medical devices, about the lack of security and healthcare technology, not about its data banks, but about something much more alarming, the dialysis system for diabetics, pacemakers, and even about implants. Could a hacker one day get into an artificial heart? Because according to a famous computer expert, there were ways to kill a man from 32 feet away by electronically interfering with the device that kept him alive. In fact, it was confirmed that after only two weeks of work, he could intervene from 328 feet away in the radio signals of insulin pumps altering the doses, which could cause the death of the patient. His device could even scan a crowd to detect who had one of these implants installed and hijack them. But what was the hacker after? As in the case of the ATM, its intention was not to harm, 
but rather to expose the weakness of the security systems of the companies that distributed these devices. To warn about the lack of protocols that were being employed in the medical industry and how easy it was to outwit them. This undoubtedly violated the interest of these companies, which had invested large amounts of money, not only in its implementation, but also because they had already signed a significant number of contracts with many medical centers and even with governments where those systems were going to be established. Seeing Barnaby Jack as a stone in their shoes, could the social class have been involved in the death of the hacker? And not only that, some more daring assured that Barnaby had been assassinated by the government since they used that vulnerability to carry out undetectable homicides of high-ranking officials at the international level. Well, in light of the evidence, many believe that that was the case. Number 6 John Wheeler was a born political scientist who built a remarkable career starting first by serving during the Vietnam War and later by spending many years serving in the Pentagon, as well as having been an excellent presidential advisor to various administrations in the White House. However, the background was no use to him when on December 31, 2010, his body was discovered in a Delaware landfill after a garbage truck had left. That chilling scene is just the beginning of a murder that to this day has not been solved. At the time, everyone was shocked, thus unleashing various theories due to the strange circumstance surrounding his death, and above all, who he was, since he was a high political official an important person. But surely what struck me the most was the fact that Wheeler's last days were shrouded in mystery. On December 28th, the man took a train from New York City to Washington. Telephone records indicated that he returned to his residence in Newcastle at 5.30 p.m. that same day. In turn, something strange happened with his emails. An email was sent from his account to the Mitter Company with the subject invasion and theft of the Mitter plate. The communication indicated that Wheeler had lost his wallet, cell phone, and briefcase. However, he had not notified his wife or the police about the robbery. The next day, on the morning of the 29th, his wife was unable to locate him. Images captured by security cameras show Wheeler in a local pharmacy around 6 p.m., Detectives believe the man wanted to travel to Willington, about 10 kilometers from his home, to retrieve his car, which was parked at the train station. At 6.42 p.m., Wheeler arrived at the parking lot to retrieve his vehicle. On surveillance video from the scene, he can be seen agitated and distraught. He has only one shoe on and the other in his hand, a timeline that shows extremely strange and erotic behavior but which, according to many, provides important clues as what was happening with him. Internet theories surrounding Jack's case range from a random downtown mugging to a secret government assassination plot. In 2011, his wife told a media outlet that it was a murder committed by a hired criminal. Unquote. I think maybe no one has asked for the reward because they have already been paid, she said. The way they dispose of his body, it's a miracle anyone found it. That sounds professional to me. At first they thought it had been a robbery, but the cell phone, the wallet with money, and his Rolex were still with him when they found him. He had bruises that only a violent act could cause. Could it have been a commissioned crime? From who? From the government? Or some other establishment? Who benefited from his death? Questions that to this day, in more than 10 years after his death, remain unanswered. 
Number five. Ning Li was a well-known American scientist whose advances and achievements in various subjects were widely reported by prestigious scientific journals during the second half of the 1990s. However, her most controversial studies were those based on the so-called anti-gravity studies, in which she claimed to have found a way to keep an object suspended in the air without a propelling source. In the 1990s, Lee worked as a research scientist at the Center for Space Plasma and Aeronautics Research at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. In 1999, she left the university to form a company, AC Gravity, LLC, to continue anti-gravity research. She claimed that an anti-gravity effect could be produced by spinning ions, creating a gravitonic magnetic field perpendicular to the axis of spin. In her theory, if a large number of ions could be aligned, the resulting effect would be a very strong gravitonic magnetic field, producing a strong repulsive force. The alignment may be possible by tapping superconducting ions in a lattice structure in a high-temperature superconducting disk. Lee claimed that the experimental results confirmed her theories. In fact, her claim to have functional anti-gravity devices was quoted in the popular press and in popular science magazines with some enthusiasm at that time. In 1997, Lee published a paper stating that recent experiments reported anomalous weight changes of 0.05 to 2.1% for a test mass suspended above a spinning superconductor. So you can see that she wasn't simply a fraud and that her studies were on track, or at least her prototype did work. AC Gravity received a U.S. Department of Defense grant of $448,970 in 2001 to continue anti-gravity research. The grant period ended in 2002, but the results of this research were never made public. Dr. Lee disappeared from the scientific world. She did not publish anything else, nor did she have any other interviews. There is no evidence that the company has done any other work, although as of 2021, AC Gravity is still listed as an existing business. Why was this? Unfortunately, Dr. Lee passed away in July 2021, so a series of questions remain in the air, such as, if the doctor was so enthusiastic about publishing her advances regarding anti-gravity, why did she stop publishing them in 2002? Has the government prevented her? What results have been achieved in this area up to today? Why did Dr. Lee leave the public scene so suddenly? Number 4 Without a doubt that in recent years the world has known about vaccines, because due to the pandemic, governments around the world have had to disperse millions and millions of dollars to keep the contagious COVID-19 under control. But what would you say to me if I told you that there was no need to spend so much on vaccines, and that all of this could have been handled in another way? Well, that was the answer that Dr. Andrew Molden had discovered in his research. However, the doctor died suddenly just days after exposing his work in 2013, leaving a feeling that his research had blown up the pharmaceutical industry. The doctor was about to launch a set of investigations and treatments, which according to closed sources, dispensed with a vaccination, putting this multi-million dollar industry in check. Among them, he was going to show that many modern diseases were the result of microvascular damage and impaired blood flow, that the damages that result from the use of vaccines and exposure to toxins in the environment and food cause the same type of reaction in the body as many viruses today. During those years, Mr. Molden, thanks to his research, 
correctly understood that we are now living in a time when multiple factors combine to create conditions in which modern diseases can occur. It is not just vaccines and toxins in our environment and food that challenge normal, healthy human functioning, but also the condition of the body itself, especially nutritional status and gut flora that determine whether reaction to vaccines and environmental toxins will be minimal, moderate, or severe. His germ theory of disease tried to explain that diseases are caused by germs and that the pharmaceutical industry does not identify harmful reactions to its products. He used research methods that were diagnosed to show statistical reliability for groups of animals or people, thus ignoring the actual harm experienced by individual subjects. Can you imagine the disaster that it would have generated in the pharmaceutical and pharmacological industry revealing these results? Due to this, many maintain that Dr. Molden did not die as a result of a heart attack, as was said at the time, but that his death was an order made by powerful people who saw in him the ruin of their business life. Without a doubt, a death surrounded by a halo of mystery. Number 3 Surely, if I name Stanley Meyer, you will be left with a tremendous question mark in your mind. He wasn't very well known, in addition to the fact that he was always somewhat reluctant to give interviews or go to conventions. However, this man could have forever changed everyone's life, and especially that of our planet, since he was responsible for one of the most important inventions that almost could have radically transformed the automotive industry. Just as you know, Meyer was an American scientist who developed, manufactured, and patented the first real alternative energy source to oil, using the most abundant element on the Earth's surface, by which I mean water. Just as you heard, specifically, he created an engine capable of driving a vehicle with simple H2O, as an energy source. His theory consisted of breaking the water molecule based on positive impulses of kilowatts. After this, the mixture was injected into the engine, which produced water again. It was not even necessary to recharge the engine with more liquid, since the component that came out of the exhaust pipe was recycled back into water autonomously and only 7.4 microliters of water were necessary for each explosion to generate 50 horsepower. The scientists who studied the invention were surprised because they were dubbed the Meyer cells stayed cold even after hours of operation, with few milliamps instead of amps, as conventional electrolysis does today. A vehicle equipped with this system came to participate in a race in Australia with a distance of 1,800 miles, and its performance was more than satisfactory. In addition, in the event of a collision, the engine would not explode, since it was not carrying hydrogen. Stanley Myers came to work for NASA and was named Inventor of the Year in 1993. However, and as seems to be customary in this type of case, he died of poisoning and under mysterious circumstances at the age of 57, just a day away of signing a multi-million dollar contract with the U.S. Department of Defense. Some conspiracy theory lovers pointed to the oil industry as his murderer, and even his brother declared that months later, both the vehicle and the experimental equipment were stolen. Can you imagine what the big oil companies and countries would be like today if this discovery had become widespread? Clearly, Stanley Meyer was a piece that had to be removed. This story is real. It's not a conspiracy theory. But how it almost always happens in this type of case, nobody cares. Number 2 You know this name, 
We covered its history individually some time ago. Jacobo Greenberg was one of the most successful scientists in Mexico. His studies on human consciousness made him stand out as one of the most brilliant minds in the field. But for him, it was not enough. He felt that something was missing to access the full knowledge of consciousness. It was there that he met Pachita, who would completely change his life. Pachita was a popular healer who was said to perform miracles on those suffering from serious health issues. Dr. Greenberg, like all scientists, did not believe much in it, but he visited her to deny what for him was a fraud. None of his colleagues imagined that he would return as a completely new man in recounting experiences that bordered on fantasy. Jacobo Greenberg recounts that he witnessed healings that were practically impossible to carry out, interventions that he defined as spiritual surgeries, in which Pachita, dispensing with any medical procedure or surgical materials, intervened on the sick with her own hands, opening their bodies, and even on occasion, removing internal organs that managed to heal, and then putting them back without leaving scars on the skin. Those close to him report that his encounters with Pachita allowed Jacobo Greenberg to obtain a new perception of reality. So his following investigations took a dramatic turn towards the study of the shamans of the original peoples of Mexico, resulting in his famous synergic theory which proposed that all our minds are connected to each other by a source of unknown origin, putting before our eyes a simulation with laws and rules that we perceive as reality. These linked studies of the esoteric sciences made Dr. Greenberg very popular, publishing several books, giving talks, and numerous interviews. However, the fate that awaited him was another, one covered by an enigmatic cloak of mystery. On December 8, 1994, Dr. Jacobo Greenberg disappeared without leaving a trace. In charge of the investigation was a prosecutor who dedicated himself exclusively to clarifying the case. However, a year later, the prosecutor was removed after allegedly touching on what they called sensitive issues that prevented him from continuing his search. The strangest thing of all was that his partner would soon also disappear without having declared, leaving the case at a standstill. Thus, without a body or clues to investigate, it was never known what happened to him, giving rise to all kinds of speculation and conspiracy theories. The most down-to-earth say that he distanced himself from all civilization to fully immerse himself in his studies. Others say that he was the victim of professional envy or a crime of passion. However, there are many who believe that Jacobo Greenberg reached full knowledge of consciousness and that he transcended matter, managing to modify reality at will speculating that he obtained the ability to make quantum leaps and that he is traveling in time. Others say that his knowledge of human consciousness was seen as a threat to the security of the country, which is why he's being held in a secret location. While there are those who suggest that his wife was actually a CIA agent and that he was recruited to continue his investigations with them. Whatever the reasons, there is no doubt that Jacobo Greenberg left a great written legacy on studies of the brain and consciousness, which have also been eclipsed by texts about his mysterious disappearance. What could have happened to him? Let me know what you think. Number 1 We conclude this video not with a doctor or scientist, but with an important personality worldwide who died under strange circumstances that to this day have not been fully clarified. 
a celebrity who for many knew so much that she was seen as a threat to her country. And I'm talking about the unique Marilyn Monroe. The official version said that the actress died from an overdose of Nimbutal, a powerful sleeping pill of that time to which the actress was addicted. However, those in charge of the autopsy revealed that her neck was swollen and bruised. What caused her neck lesions? Theories about her death have not stopped since her body was found. Many point out that because of her relationship with the president at that time, John F. Kennedy, she would have found out about very sensitive matters for the security of the country. The rumor known was that both were lovers, and as we all know, the deepest secrets are sometimes told in private. It is believed that Marilyn was actually murdered for knowing too much. About what, you ask? The answer is about aliens and visitors from other planets. Nick Redford was one of the writers who referred to this theory. He even published a book titled UFO Conspiracies and the Mysterious Death of Marilyn Monroe. In the book, it is said that Marilyn had confidential information that could reveal the existence of alien life acquired through the romance that was always rumored that she had with then-President John F. Kennedy. Apparently, the actress was aware of the discovery of remains of unidentified flying objects that would have crashed in areas of the United States and of the existence of strange corpses preserved in military bases. Obviously, the U.S. military was not going to allow such information to spread, which would have led to an international operation to assassinate her. The information that was disseminated at that time about the overdose she suffered at the age of 36 would have been just a cover so as not to raise suspicion about the true cause of her death, a strange death to which President Kennedy himself would later be added, who died after being shot while driving in the presidential convertible car. Many say that President Kennedy's desire was to make public important documents that the CIA kept as top secret and which, they speculate, denoted the presence of beings from other worlds that had been contacted by secret government establishments. Information so important that not even the president was authorized to tell. Could these two deaths have been linked to the same cause? Let me know your opinion in the comment box, because this video has come to an end. My name is Leonore Clay, and this was the darkest secret.